How's everybody doing? Good. It's bright up here today, man. We got some kind of new deal going on or what? Huh? Um, well, we've had, you know, three really good four. This is our fourth practice of the week, but three really good practices. These last practices after we kind of got back and got the Christmas hangover out of them and practiced really well today. Uh, had to go inside. Thought it would you know, our fields are not in great shape, so as soon as they get a little bit wet, it's it's a little bit tough to go out there on the fields. But we f we feel very fortunate we've been able to go outside as much as we have been able to go out uh, to get two days in this week um, outside. It could have been a lot worse. Um, you know, we go two days in pads and then one day in shells, so tomorrow will be a shell day for us. And um, tomorrow will be our last practice before we travel out there on Friday. Uh, everybody was back in practice today. James Carpenter was back, is not sick anymore. Um, you know, Marquise did everything um, in practice, so we really didn't have any problems, you know, from that standpoint. And, you know, I would like to take this opportunity because it's probably my last public appearance of the year uh, to wish everybody a, a happy holiday and a happy new year. And uh, I guess it's always a good time to have gratitude for all the good things that we have and all the good things that have happened um, in the year past and be very thankful that we have uh, an opportunity to look forward to next year. Um, and as we always try to focus on what's happening now in the moment, um, I know that um, we wish everybody a very prosperous and happy year for the next year. Coach, there's an extended period of time between the SEC championship and, and the national championship. You're coming to the end of that time. I'm just wondering how challenging is that for you as a coach uh, to be able to rally the troops, if you will, and, and how have the players responded? Well, the players have been, you know, really pretty good about it. And, um, you know, I think they're excited to have the opportunity to play in this game. Uh, I think it's, it's everybody's sort of got to change their mindset a little bit. Because by this time, after 13 games, you know, you're really kind of used to this is what you do on Monday, this is what you do on Tuesday, this is what you do on Wednesday, this is what you do on Thursday, then you go play a game. And um, so, you know, we've gone through, you know, two of those blocks of time sort of in preparation for something, but then there's never a game. Uh, but I think that you have to uh, sort of work your way back into it because – You've had a significant amount of time off, and uh, I think these last two days, I, I really feel like, you know, our team is, you know, sort of back, uh, you know, moving like they need to, being able to sustain. Guys look fast and quick, and, you know, they kind of went through that, run them down a little bit, get tired, give them some days off, bounce back, sort of go through it again, and uh, then you're back to where you need to be. So, uh, but it is a long time not to have a game. Uh, but I do think that you want to, especially emotionally and psychologically, physically is a different thing. And what we've been focusing on to this point is trying to get them back physically to where they need to be. Uh, I think emotionally, um, you know, you want to sort of get right for the game, you know, when the game comes. And uh, we still have quite a bit of time until the game, more than what we, we would have for just about any other game we had, have played this year except a bye week game. So, um, you know, even though we, you know, work quite a bit on what Texas does and all that, we, we still, you know, that's just technically what we need to do to have success in the game, and that's what we want to try to continue to work on. Well, you know, Colin was a, had a very significant role in the passing game early in the season. I think somewhere in the middle, and I don't remember exactly which games, but, you know, he got injured and missed a couple games, and um, we missed him a little bit. Uh, but when he came back, he really came back with guns a-blazing and, you know, has made some really big plays for us. And, um, you know, the way people play us outside, you know, it's probably um, a good thing that we have a, a really good pass-receiving tight end who has – you know, good hands and is good athlete and is very smart, you know, as a player and knows how to get open. So, um, and he certainly made, 
you know, big plays in those two games that you mentioned, and uh, they were critical in, in both games as well. Um, following up on what Chase was asking, the, kind of the receiving core in, in general has done a good job. Uh, you know, Julio Jones gets a lot of the credit, but Colin and Marquise Mays and, and Darius Hines, could you talk about kind of the role they've played, uh, kind of like giving the, uh, giving the passing game a well-rounded um, aspect? Well, I think that um, I've mentioned this on several occasions this year that uh, I thought the the improvement of those two guys that you mentioned, um, certainly, you know, the attitude that they played with, the character, the competitive spirit that they played with, not only in terms of how many passes they caught, but our receivers this year have done a really good job of blocking, playing with better toughness, um, and have made – each one of them has made significant plays in some game somewhere along the line that were critical to the outcome of the game. I mean, every one of those guys. And I think that's what you want. And they all have a little bit different role that they play. Um, but together as a group, they make a very complete group, in my opinion. Um, and they've done a, 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 an outstanding job for us all year. And I think that's one of the biggest differences between this year's team and last year's team offensively is – we, we have more players who can make plays, are confident that they can make plays, and who have made plays, including the tight end and at least three receivers in the receiving core um, that have been pretty consistent about it all year long. And uh, this is probably a little off the wall question, but uh, when you go back to the preseason and, and you're looking at this team, uh, did you have any unknowns or any questions about how is, it, how is this area going to come together, how is that area? Uh, do you ever think back to that time to how those question marks have obviously come out in a, in a good way? Well, I, th I think that, you know, you always sort of have questions and concerns about your team uh, every year in terms of there's always going to be some area of your team that you're trying to rebuild. Uh, it's always going to create opportunities for other players on the team, and you never know for sure exactly how that group's going to come together or how those young players are going to respond. And you know, the offensive line was always, you know, sort of something that we talked about. And seldom did we have a, any kind of media gathering where somebody didn't ask about the concern they had about the quarterback position. Um, there wasn't always a lot of questions about the defense because there was a lot of guys coming back on the defense. Now, next year, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions about that, all right, because there's going to be lots of opportunities for lots of other guys to play relative to – who leaves the team. And I think you always have that in college. You know, your team's always changing and you really want to develop and you're always going to have those questions. And you have those questions throughout the course of the year when you lose a significant player for a game or for a season or for several games. You know, just like we've had opportunities when we mentioned Peak missing, you know, Michael Williams did a, you know, really good job. Um, and you know, Dante Hightower's missed, and we've had three or four guys that have sort of filled in various roles that he had. But they were question marks, you know, at the time. So I think you always have that on your team, and it's sort of ever-evolving and ever-changing. And um, I feel like we've been very fortunate this year that just about in every opportunity that was created, you know, somebody stepped up, you know, to the challenge and – um, the other players on the team sort of help them do the things that they need to do to be able to fulfill their role and responsibility to the team. Um, so, but you always have those questions. Coach, the two teams in this game rank one, two nationally against the run. Is, is that due similarities in style, you know, as far as how, how, just in, in terms of de defensive schemes, is that, you know, similarities in personnel? Why do you think that is? Well, I, I don't really know why. I mean, but, you know, they're, first of all, I think they they have good players, and I think we have good players. And I think that start, it starts with that. Uh, and I think that in, in both cases, those players are pretty well coached in terms of, you know, how they play and the scheme that they play and what they do. And there are some similarities you know, in the backgrounds and, you know, all that. But I, I don't think that's what makes it that way. I think it's the fact that 
you know, they do a really good job of coaching their players. Will does a really good job. Uh, I, don't, I don't know everybody else on their staff, but uh, and he's done that just about every place he's been. Um, and they have very good players, and their players play hard. They play with a lot of toughness, and they play with a lot of discipline and doing what they're supposed to do, so the scheme works well, you know, for them. So um, that's – but there, there could be a totally different system and scheme that somebody ranks just as highly or does just as well in um, because they're coached well in that particular system and scheme uh, and their players have the same qualities because they've responded to the things they need to do to play well together as a unit. And their guys have, and it's probably because of the the good job that's done. They've got a lot of good players, and they've done a good job of developing those players, and those players play well together. And also with this trip to California, it's uh, it is like a bowl trip, but it's not a traditional bowl game. I know there's always a lot of things like team activities, things you allow guys to do. Is that going to stay the same with this, or is this a little more business like because of the stakes involved? Well, you know, I think the whole trip is set up a little bit differently. You know, I don't think there's a lot of activities for the players on the trip. Uh, it is a bold trip, but it is a business trip. But every bold trip that we've taken, we've always tried to create a balance between the business side of it and playing well and, um, you know, actually the players getting some opportunity to get uh, some reward, you know, for their accomplishments for the year in terms of um, what they're allowed to do. Uh, and I don't think that our players here in Tuscaloosa with nothing else to do right now. This is just me. I mean, I might be wrong. Think about this game 24-7. You know, maybe some of you all do, but I don't think they do. All right? I mean, when they come here, they think about it. They, they focus really well. They're concerned about doing their job. Uh, some of them spend extra time, you know, doing all that stuff. But, you know, they still have a life to live and other things that are important you know, their families and all that kind of stuff. And I think what I'm concerned about is when we are in doing something as a team that they've got their gas tank ready to go emotionally, physically, and mentally to do what they need to do to be able to play their best football game. And that's what we've talked about, you know, all along. Um, and each guy's got to manage that. You know, each guy's got to manage that. You know, I told you once before, I drew a line on the board, you know, the day after the SEC championship game and said it's 32 days until we play in the national championship game. And how every one of you guys manage that is going to determine how well you play. Not just practice, how well you take care of yourself, how well you rest, you know, the kind of shape you stay in, how you work out between now and then, how you practice, how you prepare yourself mentally to play in the game. So... Everybody's got to make those decisions, and no matter what we do, we, we can't make them do it. We can't make them do it. You know, if guys are going to go, you know, jump in the middle of the ocean, they got free time, you can tell them, I'd rather you not do that. But, and most of them respond to what you want to do, but it's still their choices and decisions, and that usually comes from how important is it to them. And so far, you know, I think everybody's responded that this is important to them and, you know, they're looking forward to the opportunity that they've created for themselves, you know, in this game. Uh, yeah, Coach, I don't know how well, if at all, you know Mike Leach at Texas Tech, but I was just wanting to get your reaction to him getting fired. And is it kind of a fine line that a coach deals with every day and how they treat treat their players? And Well, um you know, I don't know Mike Leach very well. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him as a coach uh, in terms of how their teams have played, what they've done, what they've accomplished, and especially um, offensively, which he's, you know, I think responsible for. Uh, they have been uh, pretty innovative in the things that they've done, and uh, I think he has a tremendous amount to do with that. So I have a lot of respect for him as a coach and, and all that. Um, I don't have any comments about, you know, what happened, what was done, or anything else. Um, but I, I, I will say this: that in anyone that we have in our program, 
player, coach, um, person that works here who tries to uh, help, you know, in our organization, uh, we, we would certainly want to always treat with uh, compassion. And if any of those players uh, didn't or people didn't respond to do their job the way they needed to do it, then we would find some kind of way for them not to be in the organization. But we would never do anything that would hurt someone in any way uh, in terms of how we treated them. I'm not saying they did. I'm not doing that. I'm just giving you how we run our ship.